Good morning and a very warm welcome to Dundonald Parish Church. It's great to have you worshipping with us today. My name is Lindsay Brennan and I'm the minister here in Dundonald. But we welcome you whether you're from Dundonald or out with. It's good to have you in this place of worship. Today coming from the manse, but hopefully not in the too distant future, we will be back in our church sanctuary. But welcome. If you're new to worshipping with us at Dundonald, please do get in touch via our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, because it'd be good to know who you are and where you come from. Before we begin our time of worship, where today we're going to be looking at one of the parables of Jesus, one of the stories that Jesus told, and it's the parable of the sower. And we're thinking about that parable and what that means to us as Christians today. But before that, we just have a couple of news and notices. Next week, I will be on annual leave, but there will be a service being um, coming from Dundonald. It won't be uh, one of our own services. Instead, it will be a service that's been produced by uh, Martin Fair, who is the moderator of the Church of Scotland. So when you tune in next week, there will be a service of worship and it comes from Martin Fair. So we thank Martin for putting these services together so that uh, ministers can go on annual leave during this time and also the people that are involved in production and putting these services together can get some time off. So thank you, Martin. Another intimation is that we're aware that some people have been collecting um, the money that would normally be put into the open plate offering every week in church, their envelopes, they've been collecting their envelopes over the last couple of weeks and storing them up at home. If you want someone to come and pick up those envelopes from you, then contact myself or Bob McMillan and someone will come and pick up those envelopes. Or if you want to drop them off to Bob McMillan, that is great too. I know some of you have quite a number of these wee envelopes by now and uh, we can take them from you, that's no problem. And thank you for still giving to your church at this time. Um, just some other intimations before we begin our time of worship. Just a reminder that we have our Zoom tea and coffee today at 12 noon. I've noticed it's pretty much the same people that are coming on every week. So why not give it a go if you haven't joined us for tea and coffee? It's quite easy. Just make yourself a cup of tea, grab yourself a cake or a biscuit and um, log on to the link that Bob sends. Or you can ask us for the link and come and join us. Even if you're not from Dundonald but you've been worshipping with us, feel free to pop in for tea and coffee because we love visitors and we'll give you a very good Dundonald welcome. Also to tell you that we've got our Sunday club continuing at um, 11. So if you need the link to join Kirsty and her team for the, for the Sunday club, then please just get in touch with us. A call to worship. We all love a good story. We can't wait to hear how it ends. Come and worship the Lord God, author of our stories, each one so different. But if properly rooted in God, they can be amazing. Come and hear God's story for us today and make it part of your story. Let's come and worship God together by singing, Ye Servants of God, your master proclaimed. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name. The name all victorious of Jesus extol. His kingdom is glorious and rules of
Let's come now and approach God in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace and love, we rely on your love, extended to us in all ways and at all times, extravagantly and with generosity. We live day by day, knowing that your care and concern is poured out for us in your provision for our needs and beyond our imagining. You entrust us with the gift of the good news of the gospel and invite us to be partners in the sharing of the message of grace. Day by day, we realise that many gifts lavished upon us. We come to you to acknowledge and praise you for all your goodness to us. Lord, it is so good to read your word and hear the parables you told. But Lord, we can't leave it there. We must take note of the explanation and work it out in our own lives. Help us, O oh Lord, to listen, to learn and to act. As we come to the part of the prayer where we confess our sins to God, please join in the last verse, which is, Forgive us, good Lord, and make us new. For the times we dash haphazardly into your presence, finding it hard to leave behind our cares and worries. Forgive us, good Lord, and make us new. For the times when we don't learn from our experiences. Forgive us, good Lord, and make us new. For the times when we don't take care of ourselves, or the people we share our lives with. Forgive us, good Lord, and make us new. For the times we don't see what you want us to see and just take things at face value. Forgive us, good Lord, and make us new. For the times we want our seed planted in neat rows, when our own plans become more important than yours, rather than letting the Holy Spirit prepare the soil of our lives and blow where the Spirit wants to. Forgive us, good Lord, and make us new. And join me as we now say the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Bible this morning will be read by Kevin Wright. Good morning. The reading today is from Matthew 12, verses 1 to 9, and then verses 18 to 23. The parable of the good sower. That same day, Jesus left the house and went to the lakeside where he sat down to teach. The crowd that gathered round him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it, while the crowd stood on the shore. He used parables to tell them many things. Once there was a man who went to sow grain. As he scattered the seed in the field, some of it fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some of it fell on rocky ground where there was little soil. The seeds soon sprouted because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it burned the young plants. And because the roots had not grown deep enough, the plants soon dried up. Some of the seed fell among the thorn bushes, which grew up and choked the plants. But some seeds fell in good soil, and the plants bore grain. Some had 100 grains, others 60, and others 30. And now we'll read from verses 18. Listen, then, and learn what the parable of the sower means. Those who hear the message about the kingdom, but do not understand it, 
are like the seeds that fell along the path. The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in them. The seeds that fell on rocky ground stand for those who receive the message gladly as soon as they hear it. But it does not sink deep into them and they don't last long. So when trouble or persecution comes because of the message, they give up at once. The seeds that fell among the thorn bushes stand for those who hear the message. But the worries about this life and the love for riches choke the message and they don't bear fruit. And the seeds sown in the good soil stand for those who hear the message and understand it. They bear fruit, some as much as 100, others 60, and others, others 30. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you? Lord Jesus, we might not be sitting by a lake today. However, as the crowds eagerly gathered to listen to the stories and truths you told them, we wait too on your word to us. With joy in our hearts and anticipation, we pray that you will give us listening ears and hearts open to receive your love, your teaching and your wisdom. Help our lives to be full to bursting bearing your fruit and be with us now. Amen. I've spoken before that just before uh, lockdown at Dundonald Parish Church we started a new venture for men in the Ockins bar and restaurant called A Pie, A Pint and A Parable. This was an opportunity for men in the village and out with to come into the Ockins bar to share fellowship to enjoy a pint, enjoy the hospitality of the Ockens Bar and to listen to a parable. All our speakers were men of deep faith that shared their own personal story of God's goodness and grace in their lives. Sometimes we need to hear a personal story to tangibly see and understand the transformative power of God. Jesus told stories or parables and he had no problems drawing people in, getting their attention and making them sit up and think more deeply. On the surface, these stories may have been about fishing or farming or some other everyday occurrence in the time of Jesus. But there was always a deeper spiritual lesson in his teaching. Jesus's parables are often referred to as an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And sometimes when people heard his parables, they never understood the spiritual significance. And that's why Jesus said later on to his disciples that people, though seeing, they did not see, 
though hearing they did not hear or understand. And we've probably experienced this ourselves. We've shared the gospel message with somebody. We've clearly shared the word of God. We might have given some personal testimony, but still there is no awakening or stirring in the heart or soul of that other person. When I was a new Christian, I couldn't believe how transformative the gospel message of the saving grace of Jesus Christ had been in my life. I was and am a new creation, the old gone, the new born, and I couldn't wait to share with my friends and family what I now experienced in my heart and what I now understood when I read God's word. I really could see life much more clearly and in much more colour. The problem I encountered that I couldn't understand was why my listeners weren't instantly on fire for God. Why did they not share my enthusiasm? How couldn't they see the living God in me? And to this day, that still does baffle me. But this is what we are being told in the parable of the sower. The seed which represents the message about the kingdom of God has the potential to flourish and bear much fruit. But a seed needs the right soil. For many years when I was at university, I was told about Jesus from a group of Christian friends, but I took absolutely no notice. In the parable, it was like the seed that fell in the path and got gobbled up instantly by a bird. I wasn't in the slightest bit interested in what my friends had to share and, they words, and their words to me just flew right out of my mind as I wasn't really listening. Jesus was easy to listen to, but harder to hear. Repeatedly, Jesus said when teaching, use your ears. He meant not just physical hearing, but inner hearing too. Holding on to the story that was being told until the good news of God's kingdom lodged firmly into your heart and started to impact your life. In my 20s, I wasn't ever really listening to my Christian friends. So God's word, that seed of life, never took root. Later, I did become interested in the life of a Christian friend when I could see that she was living a much better and more fruitful life to the one I was. And again, I heard the gospel message. And this time I did let the witness of my friend impact me for a bit. But the distractions, the pressures and the attractions of life took over again. This time it was like the seed that was planted on the rocky soil. It sprang up to life straight away, but there was no depth of soil and because there was no root, it withered away. Because of where my heart was, the seed of the gospel message, this time did not penetrate or produce any fruit. And then we hear in the parable about the seed that was sown among the thorns. This one I can now relate to in gardening terms because some of you know that I've tackled the man's garden and I've now got some beautiful flowers and bloom and vegetables and fruits and garden paths and it's looking wonderful. But what I discovered when I was gardening that is the biggest problem is weeds. They just keep coming back, very annoying. And the weeds choke and smother my growing seedlings and plants so they can't flourish. This thorny soil represents a heart that receives the gospel message, but has competition from worldly desires, wealth, materialism, and also competition from the worries of life, and both tragically choke out the life of the seed. Have you known people to walk away from their faith when life just gets too hard? Or people who have just stopped worshipping God and coming to church because life just got too busy. Worry, wealth, busyness can all choke out the life of the message of God so that it's unable to bear any fruit in a person. I am so grateful to my Christian friend who's called Judith. Jude did not give up sowing God's seed of hope and transformation through Jesus to me. And one day she spoke about Jesus and I sat up and I listened. One day she sent me a Bible in the post and I read it. 
One day she suggested I went to church to hear the word of God and I went. And one day I heard that Jesus died for me so I could have a life lived in all its fullness with God. A life free from guilt and shame and past mistakes. And I listened. Inner healing deep in my soul took place. At this point I had a receptive heart. The seed was sown and the soil was right and I received the message deep down in my heart and that life-giving gospel message of the kingdom of God started to take root in my life and produce fruit. And I am so grateful that my friend Jude did not give up on me. And we need to have the same attitude. I since discovered that this friend Jude prayed for me for over 10 years that I would find my salvation in Jesus Christ and come to have my own personal relationship with Jesus. Not a shallow faith, but a deep life giving and receiving faith. Yes, many people do not respond as we hope when we invite them to church or to a Christian group, but our responsibility is to sow the seed as did Jesus, to trust God, and to understand that we will get a mixed response to our message. But we've never to lose hope because the word of God has the power to produce life even in dead soil. The person who receives the gospel of the kingdom into his or her heart will experience a radical transformation because of the life-giving power of the gospel. They will experience the fruit of the spirit of God his love, his joy, his peace, his forbearance, his kindness, his goodness, his faithfulness, his gentleness and his self-control. And they will experience the gifts of the Spirit in their lives, God's wisdom, his knowledge, his ability to love others and to discern what is right and what is good and to do things well beyond their own strength and ability. Radical transformation happens when the seed of God is given root to flourish. This parable has so many implications for us today. Are we scattering the seeds of God's transforming love in Jesus? Or do we not bother leaving that up to somebody else? It's wonderful how God can speak so clearly to us today and I want to share something with you that happened to me this week. I had just been preparing for this sermon on the parable of the sower and as you know we've been giving away bags of joy, just a little bag of goodies we've been giving away to people in our parish and out with to remind them that they matter and in each bag we have put in a handwritten card and a prayer. Well last week when I was preparing for this sermon I got a, a card in the post, a thank you card from someone that had received one of our bags of joy. And the lady who sent me the card said that she felt that she had to go into her Bible and find a verse to send back to me. A Bible verse that she thought was relevant to us. And my good goodness, did God speak into my heart when I read it. And I'll read it to you now. It was Psalm 112 verse 9. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. The horn will be lifted high in honour. We need to keep scattering the greatest gift we have ever received to others. The gift of life in Jesus. Have you given up asking your friend to church because they keep saying no? Well, why not share this service of worship with someone today? You don't have to do an awful lot, you just need to hit a button on Facebook or copy the link on YouTube and send it off to someone. A seed sown and you let God do the rest. And you know, this parable is not only about sharing uh, good words and gifts with others. It's also about keeping ourselves well so we can receive from God in the best possible way. Are we careful to supply proper nutrients and care for our well-being by continually being watered with the word of God? 
Are we part of a protecting and loving community of faith with other believers? Are we hearing but not fully listening to God? This week, give God the time he deserves and sit down and meditate on the word of God so that it firmly plants and takes root in your mind, your heart and your soul. Don't let this sermon just wash over you, but read the scripture again and let it take root in your life so you will flourish for God's glory. Let's pray. Lord God, how can we possibly understand what you have to say to us if we don't take time to listen? Help us to carve out moments this week where we can find a quiet corner or even just a glance heavenward to be with you. Speak to us, Lord, and bless us and make us a blessing to others. Amen. Our prayers for others and the world today will be read by Nikki Penman. When I think about the parable of the sower, I think about sowing the seeds of God's love and nourishing our relationship with God so we can share this with others. Even though we live in troubled and uncertain times, there are always examples of when we see God in the world around us. Personally, one example for me of this was when the fantastic, nurturing staff of Dundonald Primary gave all the children a plant pot, some soil and a few seeds. The children were then asked to plant the seeds, care for them and watch them develop and grow. This was a lovely gift for the children and it highlighted to them that if they planted the seed in good soil, cared for the seeds and watered it and gave it plenty of sunlight, it would grow just like God's love. I know we can see God's beauty in our seed, which has now become a beautiful plant. Gracious God, we thank you for all the good gifts that come from you. We thank you for all you have already given us. And as the good soil welcomes the seed and causes it to grow, we welcome you to take root and flourish in our lives. The seed of your kingdom is forever being sown into our lives, our world. But it doesn't always take root. Sometimes it fails to find a place to grow. Help us to identify the people around us whose soil is shallow and where growth is difficult. Help us to hold them up in love before you. Show us practical ways to help them and share your love with them. And so we pray for ourselves and others when life makes us hard and resistant like a well-trodden path where old habits and old patterns of thinking keep your message from growing. We pray for ourselves and others when we become so immersed in the short-lived, shallow, rock-hiding soil of the moment, where your life too easily gets blown away by the wind. For ourselves and others when our fears, insecurities and self-absorption tangle like weeds around your grace and choke it into silence. We pray for people known to us who find it hard to believe that things can change for the better. We see them racked by illness, weighed down by poor mental health, crippled by debt, broken by drug addiction, scarred by bereavement, shattered by unemployment. We pray for such people known to us, our family, friends, neighbours, members of our church and our community. We pray for your church, universal in general, and we pray for this church, this congregation in particular. We pray for those who are serving you and for those who are ready to serve. For everyone who is longing to reach out in true faith and proclaim the good news. Grant them your wisdom, strength and courage. Sow the seeds of your love across the whole world. Cast the seed of your word to all who will listen. As the schools are on holiday, we pray for children and young people at the end of their academic year. May young lives find relaxation with friends and family. Help children find creative ways to experience the beauty of all you have created and continue learning. Be with those who will begin to have concerns about exam results and those starting the next chapter in their life. 
especially, Lord, be with those who feel let down or alienated by all things educational and don't know where to turn. We pray for leaders responsible for making decisions about the way forward for their country. Be with people making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families, communities, countries and the wider world. We pray that they communicate clearly and truthfully and calmly with each other and with the public and that their messages are received and heeded. May truth and empathy be the touchstones of people setting policies for our protection. We pray for business owners and families facing financial stress. It can be scary and overwhelming not knowing how bills will be met or not to be able to provide for your family. As people feel financial strain during the uncertainty, bring them comfort and peace, reminding them that you are there for them. The seed of your kingdom is forever being sown into our lives and our world. O oh God, may it find good soil, may it grow and may it produce a harvest of life, peace, joy and love in us and around the globe. Amen. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and opportunities. Send us out now in your name to look consciously for ways of seeing you in the world around and to act accordingly. And may the grace of Christ attend us, the love of God surround us, the Holy Spirit keep us, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and those we love this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>